Hello everyone, you are very welcome to our daily service. This week we've been thinking about the first five commandments and we're going to begin with a wonderful prophecy from God's Word in the Old Testament. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Loving Father, we praise you that we live in the days when this prophecy has been fulfilled. And by your Holy Spirit at work in our lives, your law has been written in our hearts so that deep down we long to obey you. And so as we think about your commands throughout this week, give us a longing to live by them and by your Holy Spirit, the ability to change that our lives might more and more bring glory to you. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Psalm 119 is easily the longest psalm in the Bible, and every verse contains some reference to the commandments of God, and the psalmist delights of them. We're going to read the opening verses together. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. Today we think about the fifth commandment, Exodus 20, verse 12. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Family is the fundamental institution of God's ordering of society. And when it functions as it should, it brings great blessing to individuals, to communities and to the whole of society. And that explains why one of the Ten Commandments focuses on the family. It also explains why this is the one commandment that comes with a promise. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Elsewhere, the Bible has much to say to parents about the importance of raising their children in the Lord. But here the focus is on children. We're called to honour our parents. What does that look like? It will certainly mean respect. And for those who are younger children in the home, that will involve obedience. And I wonder if you're younger, are you obeying your parents as you should, without answering back? As we get older, obedience in that kind of way is no longer required. We've got to take responsibility for our own decisions and actions. And yet we're always to respect our parents. And surely that will involve, as far as it's possible, keeping in touch with them, involving them, in our lives, showing gratitude for the sacrifices that they made for us, seeking out their wisdom and listening to them. Well, I know respect can be very hard indeed when we recognise that our parents have not always been as they should have been. Of course, all parents are flawed. And it's important to recognise that we honour our parents, not necessarily because they are honourable in and of themselves, they haven't always been, but because of their office. A judge is called your honour. And we show respect to a judge. We, we rise in court when a judge enters. Not because of their character necessarily, but because of their position. And just as parents have had to show great forbearance for children over many years, there are times when we have to show patience and forbearance with our parents. And forgiveness too. Sometimes, sadly, parents have been very bad. They haven't loved us or made us feel loved. They might even have abused us terribly. And sadly, there are circumstances in which a normal relationship with a parent is either not possible or not necessarily wise. And yet, respect will perhaps still mean, at the very least, praying for them. But thankfully, those are extreme circumstances. All parents are, have not been perfect, but all should be honoured. We're to respect them and to provide for them. And the Bible makes that a vitally important duty. 
Mm -hmm. The first responsibility in looking after the elderly is not with the state, it's with families. Listen to Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 5. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. When we care for a parent or a grandparent in their old age, Paul says in that passage, this is pleasing to God. It might, of course, require a huge amount of time and effort, both physically and emotionally, and money. And there are times when we won't get much back for it, especially when the relationship isn't easy, or maybe our parent or grandparent has dementia and can't give us much back. And I've known friends of mine who have been serving the elderly members of their family in that kind of way have been greatly encouraged by those words of Paul, this is pleasing to God. And what's true in our biological family surely should be true in our church family. We need to care for the elderly so that no one feels lost and neglected and unappreciated in old age. But we need God's help to obey his commandments, don't we? So let's turn to him now in prayer. We thought this week about the first five commandments. I'm going to read them again one by one and then join in with the prayer after each one. God says, you shall have no other gods but me. Lord, help us to love you with all our heart and our soul, all our mind and all our strength. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Lord, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. You shall not dishonour the name of the Lord your God. Lord, help us to honour you with reverence and awe. Remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Lord, help us to celebrate Christ risen from the dead and to set our minds on things above, not on things of the earth. Honour your father and your mother. Lord, help us to live as your servants, giving respect to all, especially to our parents. Loving Father, we haven't obeyed your laws as we should have done. And we are truly sorry. We praise you that the Lord Jesus Christ took upon himself the penalty for our law breaking. So that through faith in him, we can be forgiven and receive righteousness in your sight. We praise you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We ask change our desires that we might more and more long to live for you. And that our lives might show loving obedience for your name's sake. Amen. Now a prayer for family life. Heavenly Father, whose Son Jesus Christ, born of a woman, sanctified childhood and shared the life of an earthly home, bless the homes and families of our nation. Give to parents a true sense of responsibility in the care and training of their children, that our boys and girls may grow up in the fear of your name and the fellowship of your church. Help children to obey their parents when they are young, and help us all throughout our lives to honour our parents, and as they get older, to give them the support and help they need. For the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. Now a moment of silence as we bring before the Lord our own needs and concerns. As we remember those who've just had exam results, or are soon to receive them as they face the future, sometimes uncertain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If we're to obey the Lord's commandments, we need his help. Our song is a prayer that God would change our hearts.
Thanks so much for joining us today. May the Lord be with you every step of the way. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of his Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and all those we love today and evermore. Amen.